Hello. I am on my way, excuse me, to my meeting. And uh, to pick up Tanya. I really just wanted to go out to eat tonight. I was like, can we please, we used to go get those like foot massages. I really just wanted to get, I did my, actually did my hair tonight, what do you think? Here's my little thumbnail. Um, my husband's texting me. He's at the gym. Um, I actually just wanted to go out to dinner tonight. But Tani was like, no, let's go to the meeting. I was like, okay, probably better for me anyway. I stayed the same weight that I was yesterday, even though we went out to eat and everything, but like, I just weighed myself. And I was like a pound and a half less than I was when I weighed myself this morning. That's why you cannot weigh yourself a thousand times throughout the day. Because what you will find is your weight changes and fluctuates throughout the day. But I'm not mad at it. I'm starting to actually be able to tell that I've lost some weight. Can you guys tell at all? Seriously, like no, not at all. Like it's crazy because I'm like, okay, so right now, I just weighed myself, I was 223.6. And um, when I started this diet, I thought I started it at 245.6, but I actually started at 246.8, I think. So I don't know why it's going, like the color is going in and out of the light. But anyway, so I've actually lost like 23.2 pounds. So can you imagine when I lose like 20 to 30 more, more, 20 to 30 pounds or more. Like, can you even imagine? Crazy town. What is today? Tuesday? I was just thinking, like, I wonder when... <laughs> he just said, I'll be a noodle tomorrow. We haven't, like, either one of us gone to the gym in forever. We pay for this stupid gym membership and we never go, so I'm glad that he went and used it. But once I get below 220, I'm going to start going to the gym, so... I, maybe I'll vlog some from the gym because I'm going to go there late at night. I don't like to go to the gym during the day. Um, I've actually had a really good day so far. I did not have to, I didn't have any meetings, I didn't have any appointments. So I got up today and um, I wore my watch again. I got up today and I like made a cup of coffee. Did I make a cup of coffee? I can't even remember now. I sat outside and I like to let the dogs out and I like went through my social media stuff, which I usually do. I'm so behind on emails. If you guys have sent me an email, I apologize. That's my goal tomorrow is to answer every email that I've received in the last couple weeks. Um, I'm literally like three weeks behind on emails. I think I, I just looked like yesterday because I was trying to figure out like things to do that I have things I have to do and I was like Peter you have like a hundred emails you have to answer so but it's so nice that people actually even email me so I can take the time to respond um because <clears throat> I love that but I uh now it's really dark I was like hoping it would get lighter when I turned but it's not um <clears throat> So I got up, I did that, and then I like went to uh, went to the bank, went to get st Starbucks. Got a cold press today. I love the cold. Press. Sometimes I go get an iced coffee, and sometimes I get a cold press. And today I got a cold press, and then um, which is just like when they make it themselves. I'm sorry for the light, you guys. I didn't realize that it was going to do that, or I wouldn't have filmed right now. And then I uh, went to the post office. I, I, oh, shit. I got a bunch of stuff from the post office. I wanted to show it in my vlog. Well, I'll have to show it tomorrow. Um, Tammy sent me a book, an autobiography of a famous YouTuber. And uh, somebody else sent me the same book of the same famous YouTuber. So I'm sure you guys can guess who the famous YouTuber is. But anyway, um, let's see. And then I got a very, very nice two cards, actually. I cannot remember her name. Miranda, maybe? It starts with an M. From the north side of Indianapolis. So, hey. Anyway, I'll read them later to you guys. I'll tell you uh, what people sent me. Because it was very, very sweet. And, um... Then I came home. 
Oh, I went to the bank too, did I already say that? Then I came home and I filmed the videos. I had so much fun today, you guys, making the videos. I actually had two videos um, that I filmed for my main channel. And so I made those two videos and then I, um, I was like, Get, uh, sorry, I made my uh, Healthy Life channel. I did the, I'm doing meditations again on there with my weight loss stuff and kind of discussing the meditations. And then, like, I was getting ready to do this book tag that somebody had tagged me in, the Stephen King book tag, which I did do. The light is so bad in here, you guys. I am so sorry. Um, I mean, even if I turn on the light, it won't make it any better. It's because the light's behind me. Well, it's very photographic, don't you think? <gasps> peace. Peace. So, uh, peace. <laughs> Little bunny foo foo. <laughs> anyway, um, I, uh, if that song is inappropriate, please don't come for me. The last time I said a certain way to sit, about 20 people told me, we say uh, crisscross applesauce now. I'm 45 years old. I'm not saying crisscross applesauce, okay? I'll sit down and say I'm sitting cross legged if that's what I said before was offensive to people, but I'm not gonna. If, I don't sing these songs, little bunny foo foo songs anyway, so you don't need to all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give me uh, critiques on what songs we need to use and I don't plan to have any kids. So, uh, yeah. Then I like, well, oh, then I was getting ready to do my booktube video and I, real, I, I looked at the clock and it was like 6.37 and I was like, it wasn't about, it was 6.37. I was like, shit, I gotta get in the shower to get ready for the meetings. I'd like to actually look nice for a meeting once in a blue moon instead of just throwing on a hat. Which wouldn't it be nice if I actually got up during the day and took a shower and did my hair for videos? That's gonna be my goal for the rest of the week, is I'm gonna get up and actually like take a shower before I do videos. So anyway, I did that, and then, um, yeah, and then I took a shower and I got ready. Then Alex was going to the gym, and so I was kinda texting him while he was at the gym doing cardio. And um, then I got ready, and now I'm on the way to pick up Tanya Jean, Tanya Jean, prettiest girl I've ever seen. And she leaves for LA on Thursday to visit our friend uh, Liz that lives that was on here. She lives in Portland and she's coming, not Portland. She lives in, um, shoot, why, why can I not think of this city? It's right outside of San Francisco. Anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. But she lives there and she's coming down and they're gonna do like, uh, they're going to see Hamilton. That's like the major reason why they're doing it. But Tanya like made reservations at Sir because she watches Vanderpump Rules. And then she got tickets on the TMZ bus because she wants to go see like all the celebrity things. <laughs> she's so excited about it. I'm like, girl, she's never been to LA. I'm like, I have at it. I think that's fun. I love touristy stuff. And I said, since I'm not going to LA, I said, when you come back, November or December, we're going to Gatlinburg and I want to go to Dollywood. Because I have never been to Dollywood and that is like one of my dreams to go to Dollywood before I die. So I'd like to go when Dolly's there, quite frankly, but you know, what are the chances of that? Not very good. But she's real excited about that. Why can't I think of where my friend Liz lives? What is the city right, well, I, I say it all the time in my videos and I talk about it all the time with Tanya. What is the city right outside of San Francisco? I know y'all are shouting at the camera right now. I can hear you, I can hear you. Not, it's Portland's Oregon, that's where my friend Leisha lives. Hey Leisha, I know she doesn't watch my videos. Um, what is the city right outside of, oh damn nation. Am I thinking it starts with a P but it really starts with an O? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Does it sound anything like Portland? Is there a reason why I'm thinking that? Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Anyway, I don't know what the city is. Y'all can tell me later. Tanya will get right in the car and she'll be like, uh, what? <laughs> tell me about the good old days. And then we're gonna go to the meeting and then I don't know what I'm gonna do for dinner. I don't even know if I'm gonna do dinner. Not. Maybe I'll fast today. I've been saying I was gonna fast for a month of Sundays and I don't do it, but. Why doesn't it say where she lives? I hate when people don't put that on their uh, Facebook. Oakland, Oakland. Damn it, why am I so stupid? Oakland, so Liz lives in Oakland. <laughs> I think I was thinking like, 
Portland, Oregon. Do you guys do this? I have become my mother, I swear to God. And before my mother, my grandma should be like, uh, uh, Peter, uh, pep, 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 pep. she go through like 15 names and she gets my name. I'm becoming like that. Like that is really like an old person thing. It happens as you get older. I think I was thinking Portland, Oregon. And since Oregon, <laughs> is O, and Oakland is O. I was like, oh, she's from Portland, Oregon. It makes no sense, I know. I've lost my damn mind. Anyway. Tell me about the good old days. That sign back there said Christmas in October. No, I'd rather not. <laughs> How about Halloween in October, Christmas in December? Why do we always want to rush things, you know? And then at the end of our life, we're like, God, I wish you had had it more days. Well, no, you didn't. You did Black Friday shopping and got all your Christmas shopping done in two hours. And you said, see, we got all of our Christmas shopping done. We don't need to do any more. You got your Halloween decorations out in August. Oh, hold on a second. My husband's calling me. Oh, I missed the call. You got your Halloween decorations out in August. You got your Christmas decorations out the day of Thanksgiving. You got all your Christmas shopping done the eve of Shank Thanksgiving. You got it all taken down Christmas day night. You're ready for New Year's. When New Year's is over, you're like, it's almost summer. Now we just want to rush through life. Enjoy it. Why people want to rush everything? There's no reason for that. Enjoy life. It's short. All right. Well, let me get off here so I can call my husband back. Hello. Well, it happened again. I fell asleep until late in the evening. And honestly, if I didn't want to listen to my audiobook, you probably wouldn't be getting any more of this vlog. Because I was so tired earlier. I came home from my meeting. I had a really good time at the meeting tonight. And uh, so Tanya's leaving on Thursday. So I was like, do you want to go get something to eat for dinner or something? She was like, I hadn't eaten. And she was like, no, I need to get home and do laundry and stuff. And I was like, okay. So I made her run me. Well, I made, I made her go with me to the grocery store. And I got, I went to Kroger instead of Fresh Time. And I don't know if you guys have Kroger's where you're at. Kroger's is just like a regular grocery store. And I got this like, I don't know what kind of couscous it was. But I got couscous. And then I got this like pasta salad that she said didn't look very good. It was like cheddar broccoli. And then, um... I actually got these like stuffed olives. I don't know why. We were at this restaurant last night. They had like just olives, not stuffed, but just regular olives. And then I got um, this. And this is like that brand that I usually, I used to back in the day always get the hummus, but I don't get that. I get that Cedars now. I don't get this. So it was like that main brand of hummus that you can get anywhere. And it was like um, carrot, sriracha. It actually was really good and very mild. If you guys want to try something different, it tasted a little like corn to me. It was weird. Um, and then I got it with those, these like Sally's naked chips or whatever, but they were like these like garlic chips, like bagel chips, but they were like low cal, low fat. And, uh, it's like, uh, how would I make a plate of all of it? This couscous was like incredible. I ate like a fourth of it. And like the pasta salad, I ate like most of it. And uh, and then I had some of the hummus. I got some like black bean dip too. But I got like full like really quick. And uh, we watched American Horror Story. And um, I don't know what I think of American Horror Story this season. Like... First of all, it is hands down, and I don't usually mind, like, gore in movies, I guess. Like, I don't know. Like, the, it's, like, gratuitous violence. Like, I was watching that, and I looked at Alex, and I go, I'm really surprised this is, like, on main cable television. Like, it is gratuitous violence. It's, like, there was, like, a scene with this guy, like cutting this guy's head off in, in the shower and like in the bathtub. It's like and I'm sitting there eating my dinner. I was like I can't eat while I'm watching this minute, like the show. And then Alex was like well we can turn it off and watch. I was like no let's just. At that point I was kind of like not hungry anymore anyway but um I don't 
don't know, like, and I understand, like, there's all of these political references to it. And, uh... I don't know what I think about it. You know, like... I feel like the show has kind of lost itself in the opinion of its makers, to be really honest with you a little bit. Like... Like, I want to, like, see the show to, like, escape from things, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, and maybe that's the point of the show. I don't know. But it is entertainment, and I think we sometimes have to forget. Like, we have to remember what the purpose of entertainment is. And sometimes it's supposed to be cathartic. I don't know what I'm trying to even say, honestly. It's not a bad season. It's just a lot. It's a lot. It's like heavy thought, heavy violence. It's just a lot. And I think there's a point for all of it. But like at the same time, I'm not really sure if I think it works. So. And I'm not entirely sure that it doesn't work at the same time. So. I'm going to get some gas. I will be right back. Do you guys want to hear like a myth that I buy into that I probably shouldn't, but it just drives me nuts anyway. Is people who smoke a cigarette, uh, or smoke cigarettes at, uh, gas pumps. Like, this guy just pulled up, and he, like, got, he, like, looked at me, like, real, like, mean, mag, and mean. Got out of his car and had his big cigarette out, and he was, like, just sitting there. And then he, like, walked inside. Is that, like, a myth that you can, like, blow up a gas station off fumes. Like, I've had so many people tell me that, that, yes, that could happen. I've had so many people tell me that, no, that couldn't happen. So, um, I was just, like, washing my windows and the outside, which I, like, never do. And I was like, okay, A, tomorrow you're taking your car to get washed because your car is totally dirty. Number two, I need to clean the inside windows. Have I talked about how obsessed I am about clean, like my car being clean? It's interesting because you guys like see my house, but like, like I call it organized clutter. And when people come over, they're like, your house is like organized clutter. They're like, there are literally two areas in your house that are cluttered. And they're like, one is next to your stove where you keep all your books. And those are like all pushed in the corner. And the other section is your bedroom. And it's like Alex's dirty clothes and your dirty clothes that are on like, because I keep like the like five t-shirts and two pairs of shorts all like next to the fan on this little couch that I have. Other than that, like we're totally pretty spotless. So I never make the bed. I would make the bed every day. I mean, we have so many sheet sets and duvet covers and all that kind of stuff, but Alex likes an unmade bed, and so I'm just like, okay, I guess I'll just leave it unmade for him. And um, I have this old yellow blanket that I've been, like, comforter that I've been sleeping with. I found it, and it was, like, my mom's, and it was, like, my mom has this really nice, I didn't even find it until she passed away. This, she must have bought it. My mother would never have spent the money on something like this. I mean, she would have back in the day, but not, like, in her last 10 years of her life. I found this, like, incredible king, California, like, king, because that's what size my mom's bed was, um, king-sized Halston bed set, okay? And it came with, like, a bed curtain, and then it came with, like, sheets that are, like, these white and yellow flowers. It's beautiful. And then it came with this blanket that I have, like, a blanket blanket, like, thick wool, like, not wool, but, like, cotton blanket. And then it came with this yellow, like, comforter. And then over it, it came with this duvet cover. And, like, pillow shams and pillows and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, if that's not an example of why do you save stuff until you die, like, because you can't, I mean, <laughs> you can't take it with you, obviously. And we used some of it, but, like, if we used all of it, like, it's so feminine that we wouldn't. And, uh, but I didn't want to give it up. Just, like, I have all these pillowcases of my grandma's, and they're, like, do you guys know what percale is? Like percale sheets from back in the day. Percale sheets are like, well, she has like what's called wonder kale. 
I don't know if it's a brand or if it's like a kind of material, but it's like real soft cotton, like almost silky cotton. And I remember sleeping at my grandma's house and like one of my favorite things would be like to continuously like turn over like the pillow so you could get like the cool side of the pillow. And these Wonder Kale sheets are like, the only way I can explain them is it would be like if you washed cotton sheets like a million times, but they come that way. And I have like a bunch of, I have like five or six pillowcases that are like that. that I, and they're for twin beds, because at the end of my grandma's life, she had two twin beds in her bedroom. I don't know why. But anyway, and so like I don't want to give that up, you know? But I don't really have any pillows that match them. I mean, I have pillows that match them, but I don't have like sheet. I don't have like a, we don't have a twin bed, so. Um, anyway. Yeah, we watched, so we watched that, and then I was like, I need to lay down for a little bit. My phone was on 10%. I don't even know what it's on right now. I didn't even look. 99% because I fell asleep for so long. I said, I'm going to lay down for just a little bit, but I can't set an alarm because Alex was going to bed. And look at these police officers. Do you see this? So anyway, um, I was like, okay, I'll lay down for just a little bit. And he was like, I said, I said, babe, I said, if you're going to stay up and just like be on your phone, because sometimes he like stays on his phone for like an hour, an hour and a half before he goes to sleep. I said, if you're just going to be up on your phone, I said, can you let me know so I can just like set my alarm? He was like, no, I'm not going to be on my phone at all. And he wasn't like at all. He like turned over and went to bed. He worked out at the gym today so hard. Like he hadn't been to the gym in forever and he like really busted it at the gym. He's like, I'm going to be a noodle tomorrow. He like was on like the, uh stair stepper for like 40 minutes and then he like lifted weights and I was like for like another 45 minutes I'm like yeah good way to like push it into over gear you're like first time back on there right but um I don't even remember what I was gonna say so I lay down with the dogs and Boo and Tucker were both like I was like facing the fan and they were both like pushed up hard against me. I was like, oh, I'm so cozy. And I woke up and it was 147. And the thing is, is that like, I really want to finish my audiobook because I have an hour and like 15 minutes left, hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes, which I listen to most of my audiobooks on 1.5. 1, I listen to them like faster than that, like normal. So, um, I'll finish it. It's so crazy to me when I see people like paving roads because my dad in the summers for between for college he paved roads to pay for college. And he's like he used to say to me he'd be like, "You want to complain about what your life is like?" He was like, "Your old man used to pave roads, and his job was the one where you like walk behind the truck as it's paving and you like smooth down the road. Like that's what he did in like August and July heat in Indiana." I have no right to complain, you know? And then waited tables at a sorority house throughout the year on college. But, um, he was a waiter at the DG house. So if you were a DG at IU, you might have known my dad. Well, probably anybody that's my dad's age is probably not watching my videos. But anyway, um, which is interesting because my dad was a Fiji and my mom is a Pi Fi. And if you know, there's a song and it, she's dead, so I can sing this song because nobody's gonna come for me. But there's a Pi Fi song and it's like Pi Fi, Pi Fi, Pi Beta Fi. I'll be a Pi Fi all my life until the day I die. I wouldn't be a Kappa, DG, or Alpha Chi. Be a Pi Fi, a Pi Fi, a Pi Beta Fi. I know all the Pi Fi songs because I used to, my parents are like fraternity and sorority down. Like, I mean, let me just tell you, my mother's her closest friends in her entire life were her Pi Fi sisters. Her, my father, his like, my dad didn't have like tons and tons of friends, but like his closest friend in his entire life was his, was his fraternity brother, um, Phil. And my dad was actually the president of the fraternity house. So, my, and, uh, my mom was a legacy because my aunt was a Pi Fi before her and, um, uh, my mom was like, she didn't really care if she was in a sorority or not, but my aunt was like, oh, you will be a Pi Fi. And then they almost didn't let my mom in. I don't know if I've ever told this story before. It's kind of funny. So my mom in high school, so my mom, my aunt graduated in 59 from Broderpool High School in Indianapolis, and my um, aunt, or my aunt died in 
or my aunt graduated in 59. My mom graduated in 61. So, and I look back on this too, and I wonder, like, that was when I, my grandmother would have been in prison. So if you're new to my show, I share that I found out two summers ago after my mom had passed away that my dad told me that my grandma had been to prison. And um, it would have been when my mom was in high school. She was, my grandma went to prison for embezzlement. Um, she apparently embezzled tons of money in this company that she worked for. So anyway, um, but my mom, my aunt in high school was very much like suits, like every organization, you know, like perfect hair, all that kind of stuff. They were kind of both like this the rest of their lives, which is so funny. But my mom was very much like what, if you've watched Grease back in the day, she was very much like Rizzo, Rizzo or Rizzo in Grease. She had really short blonde hair and it was like she had car crash bangs. Car crash bangs are when they're really short, like bleach blonde hair. And she dressed up nice, but always like with a leather jacket. She used to pride herself, she would tell me this story on the fact that she would wear like really, really tight jeans rolled up, like tight rolled. And then she would wear, um, penny loafers and then she would wear taps in the penny loafers so that when she was walking down the, the school you would hear her in these penny loafers and she would also wear like those like duck shoes you know what I'm talking about with the flap in the front of them and um, very much kind of like tough my mom was a tough girl in high school and what's interesting is that she they so broad ripple at the time had sororities in high school in high school now in Indianapolis, like they've kind of gotten away from that. There was a period of time when a lot of high schools in Indianapolis had sororities. I think North Central, which is a huge high school here in town, it's like it's like um, a little bit like the north side. It's as far north in Indianapolis that you can get before going into the suburbs. It's huge. My cousin went to high school there. It's like my high school's rival. But North Central has sororities, and North Central uh, sororities are called Dolls, and my cousin was president of Dolls. I'll tell a funny story about that in a second. But anyway, and my mother was at Broader Pool, and Broader Pool's uh, sorority, uh, sorority was called Cutie Pie. And um, my mother, like, went out, and she, she had to do all these things to get into Cutie Pie. Well, she ended up becoming president of Cutie Pie. And it was like, in life, her proudest thing was that she had been like president of Cutie Pie and that she had had me, she would always say. But anyway, she was like, I loved being president of Cutie Pie. She was like, I busted my ass to be that. You know, and that was a big deal when I was in high school. She was like, you know, we like were the tough girls. We like, I ran basically the neighborhood. Like that was something that was kind of important to my mom. And she would get in trouble with like the principal and the dean and she would like completely tight lipped, would never say anything, right? Well, then she goes to IU, and Pie Fi's at IU. Now, I mean, they're known to party today, but, like, back in the day, we're known to be great families, very much, like, you know, perfect, you know, parents that were doctors and attorneys and things like that. And here comes my mom, who I'm sure at that point everybody knew, because apparently a lot of people knew this, that my grandma was in prison. So here's my mom coming, and the only thing she was going for is that my aunt's a legacy. She's still at the house, right? And my aunt, my grandma's in prison, my mom's got car crash bangs. But at that point, she was kind of a beatnik and was playing a classical guitar, and she wanted to be a hippie in 61. And uh, she didn't really care if she got the Pi-Fi house or not. She, apparently, she let them know that. And my aunt wanted her to be a Pi-Fi so bad. Like, my aunt was, like, so upset that my mom didn't want to be a Pi-Fi. And they almost didn't let my cousin in. True story, my, my aunt was not allowed to be in the room. Like, what they would do is they would flash a picture of this girl, a picture, they would talk about a girl. Later in life, they found out that they would, like, flash a girl's picture up on the wall, and then they would say all these horrible things about her. But back then they would like talk about a girl, and so they would they would say my they said my mom's name, and they were like, no, she's not a she's not a pie fi she's not pie fi material and stuff. And my aunt was so involved in pie fies, and she walked into the room, and apparently it was like a huge deal because my mom's best friend in life, Susie, who I call my mother Susie, but she's like my aunt. Um, she was there and saw this all go down because she was a year ahead of my mom. My aunt walked in the room and said, if my sister does not, is not a pie fi I am not a pie fi And they wanted to keep my aunt, so they let my mom become a pie fi True story. And what's so funny about it, in retrospect, is that my mother was 
diehard Pi Phi through and through. Like, I mean, diehard until the day she died. And uh, my aunt didn't really care so much about it. I mean, she never went to reunions. My mom went to all of them. She didn't really care about the songs or the cookie shines. My mom did all that stuff. I mean, she knew everything about it. My mother was like so into being a Pi Phi, which isn't that funny that sometimes you don't really know who you are until later. And so anyway, with my cousin, I've told this story before, but we were in Vegas for my wedding. So my cousin was like super popular in high school, right? But like, she was like, so I can always remember when my cousin wore like sweatshirts, like kind of like very 80s, you know, sweatshirts are kind of off the shoulder a little bit. She's, my cousin Caroline was hot in high school. People said she was a dead ringer for Julia Roberts in high school. And my cousin has really big lips and she's just, she's still today super good looking woman and um but she would wear like jeans then she would wear those you guys remember those Reebok shoes back in the day that had a strap that went around the ankle and everything you remember those okay she always wore those but like my cousin was like friends with like these two other girls and in retrospect I know that like they were totally the mean girls you know and um and I always thought my cousin was like the third in the group like this one girl that was super pretty was like the total bitch Excuse me. And then this other girl that they were friends with was kind of partying, fun, and all this kind of stuff. And then my cousin was like the girl that like was friends with everybody. Like, you know, the stoners, the nerds, all this kind of stuff. And everybody loved her. I found out later that was not necessarily the case. I was uh, talking to a mutual friend of my cousin Caroline and I's family friend. And um, I had never, I didn't meet him until later in life, even though our friends were our families were friends for a very long time and he said you know he goes I don't know this you know this about your cousin but your cousin was really mean in high school they're friends today he and this he and my cousin are friends today and I said really and he goes yeah he goes I mean our mothers were closest friends like their mothers like my aunt and this guy's mom were like closest friends oh my god there's a deer right out here hold on <gasps> there's a couple of them See? You see what you see out here in the woods? <gasps> Bye guys. I think deers are so spiritual, don't you? I don't know what I think why I think that. I just do. So anyway, he said your cousin he goes, your cousin and my mother were closest friends. And she was a total bitch to me in high school. She would never say hi to me, not once. And it really kind of hurt my soul a little bit for Caroline. I actually think Caroline's grown up a lot. And, like, Caroline doesn't like to talk about high school. She doesn't like to be reminded of it. She's not really friends with any of the people that she was friends with in high school. In fact, it was so weird because at her reunion, my aunt's funeral, I was going to say at her reunion, at my aunt's funeral, like two of her closest friends were there and they're not really friends anymore and they're really not that close of friends with my cousin and they were all there and I was in the basement of the party because my aunt wanted to have this huge ba this huge party after she passed away right so they were at my cousin's house and my, not my cousin's they were at my aunt's house and she's having this huge party and or my cousin had this huge party for her. and uh she I was talking to my cousin's one friend and I got so emotional and she was like, are you okay? And I said, you know, I grew up with you girls. Like these girls were like, Caroline's three years older than me, but like high, like school wise, we were four years apart. And I said, you could, you know, like you girls were like, I like wanted to be you in high school. Like I thought you guys were everything in high school. I just, I like, I would just stand in the kitchen, you know, like they would come in the kitchen, they would talk and like my, they loved my mom. And so like we, my mom and I would go to my aunt's house. I didn't, I realized now that it was because my mother was very sad and depressed. She didn't want to be in our ginormous house that I grew up in by herself that she and my dad, you know, built together. And so on Friday, she'd be like, come on, honey, pack a little bag, get some books and some toys together. And we're going to go to Aunt Kathy and Uncle Dave's. And then we would be at my aunt and uncle's house until Sunday evening. Like seriously, a lot, a lot. And uh, and I would sleep in my cousin's bedroom. She had like her double queen bed and then she had this little day bed by the window and I always slept on the day bed. And she'd be like, come on, sweetie, come on. And, um, oh no, that by the time that 
we would have done that a lot. There were there were double beds, two double beds in that bedroom. And my cousin was sleeping in the basement. She turned the basement into her bedroom. So anyway, but um, I got so upset talking to Courtney, and I was like, you know, Courtney, I said you and my cousin and Lynn and everybody, you guys were like, like you were like, you got me through high school. I mean, I got a lot of my like toughness and my, you know, like who I wanted to be from these girls, you know? And I think that in life, I've always gotten like my toughness and my bravado from st strong women. But when we were in Vegas for my wedding, one of my friends is actually a girl that Caroline graduated with, but that was a year, actually she was a year younger than Caroline. And so we were out there, and this girl very much is like me, into the stories and the old days, and all that. Caroline could care less. And Caroline's laying out by the pool, and so my friend Heather was like, oh my God, Caroline, you were so popular in high school and all this kind of stuff. And Caroline, honest to God, like does not care about this shit today, right, at all. And Caroline was like, oh no, Heather, I wasn't popular at all. I don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. And Heather was like, yes, you were, Caroline. Oh, my God, I wanted to be so bad. I think when you're popular, you take that shit for granted, you know? Like, I really do. So, I don't know how to edit, but I had to edit something out. So, um, so I hope I remember to do that. <laughs> anyway. Oh, well. When I, um, a couple years ago, I became friends with somebody. And, uh, I'm so bad at editing on this iMovie thing, you guys. I can do it, but, like, the sound starts fading out. But a couple years ago, I became friends with this guy. And, like, needless to say, he was just, like, really popular in high school. And, um, we were talking one day. And I said, you have no idea how hard it was for me in high school. And he looked at me and he said, like, you're assuming it was any different for me. And he goes, do you know what it was like to, like, have all these different expectations? And we just kind of looked at each other. And I said, you know, I never thought of it that way. And I think everybody's experience in high school is completely different, you know? But very similar in the same way. Maybe it's tough for all of us. I don't know. Maybe nobody has it easier than the rest. But anyway, I remember laying by that pool. <laughs> Caroline was like... Heather was like, oh my God, Caroline, you were so popular. Oh no, Heather, I wasn't. Yes, Caroline, you were so popular. I mean, everybody loved you, Caroline. Oh no, Heather, I, no, that's not really how it is. My cousin's very humble today. And, Car and Heather was like, oh my God, Caroline, I mean, you were in dolls. It was so hard to get into dolls. I tried out for dolls three years in a row and didn't get into dolls. Oh, Heather, it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, Caroline, you were in dolls. Yes, I know, Heather. Caroline, you were secretary of dolls. My cousin went like this. She goes, I was president of dolls. <laughs> this is when you get older and you love to sit around and tell stories and stuff like this. I love getting together with my cousin and telling these stories and stuff. It's so funny. My cousin and I are so much alike today, which is so strange that all of my high school years I wanted to be just like her and I ended up kind of like her a little bit, you know? And uh, what's so funny about this is I'm listening to this audiobook called The History of Wolves, which I need to get on or I'm never going to finish because I like to talk more than I actually like to read. And um, it's very much this study, I was thinking about this today, of this girl that like all this stuff happens to her when she's like 15 years old, but it really like makes her who she is as a 37 year old woman. And I thought, you know, like how is that true for most people? It's true for me. You know, that so much of who I am today, so much of who I desire to be, so much of what I want to break away from, so much that I'm passionate about, so many dreams that I'm trying to achieve, all come from who I was, this heavy set, closeted, scared of his own shadow, no bravado, 15-year-old kid sitting in the kitchen watching his cousin and her friends like this, not saying a word, you know, and just wishing anything he could be like them. 
And then I look at who I am today and I think about like how far I've come in my life and how far I've changed and who I've changed into and what I've become, you know? And I continue to change, you know? And uh, acknowledge that change and I think that's good. But it's like, it's like that Both Sides Now song with by, you know, like Judy Collins and Johnny Mitchell, which I love. And it, um, it talks in there about like, you know, like old friends say I've changed, but something's lost and something's gained in living every day. I've looked from both sides now, up and down and still somehow. It's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life at all. But I mean, I think that's about, you know, how it is, is when you like look at life and you, and it's like, some things are good, some things are bad. What do you do with it? Who do you want to be at the end of the day? Tony and I were talking today in the car on the way to our meeting about the, the opposite of selfishness is humility. So then if the goal in life is to be less selfish, to be selfless, then the character trait with that would be humility. And how do you act humility out in life? How do you respect your own individuality as well as be humble? And I think that the way to do that is acknowledge what you've gone through, acknowledge the changes that have happened to you in your life as lessons, but also pass them on in a way that you're not arrogant about it, you know? And that's hard, I think, sometimes. I think it's real hard. I get so in my head sometimes just thinking about things, you know, that like, I don't really get sad, I just get kind of like, moved, you know? Moved. <laughs> I'm moved. What does that even mean? Hot everywhere, Colts bullshit for the Indianapolis Colts. I could care less, honestly. I know, I, that's probably horrible, but I really could. Anyway, well, I'm gonna get off here and listen to my audiobook. So, I love you guys, signing off, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.